Hi, it's Peter from Brewbetter. Welcome to this video about my preheat coils for the Gadget Classic model group. Old version 1 Classic from 1991, Classic Pro, Classic Pro Evo, Moe's Baby, Selector, Deluxe, uh, Color, Evolution, Paros, Tebe, KitchenAid. I will talk about the root cause for developing this product. Why should you consider upgrading to preheat coils? What are the system requirements? What sort of fabrication is required for the installation? Downsides and other benefits of having preheat coils? And how to purchase? The video is time coded so you can skip to any chapter in the navigation bar or from the description. The root cause for developing this product is the tiny 8 ml boiler weighing about half a kilo or just, uh, just above one pound. First we have to understand what happens when we hit the brew button. I'm sure most of you know it, but just to ensure we are all on the same page. The pump pushes room temperature water from the reservoir to the boiler, which is ideally warmed up to about 100 Celsius or 200 Fahrenheit, to displace hot water from the boiler through the freeway valve to the group head in the hope of 93 Celsius or 199-200 Fahrenheit output water temperature. Based on simple physics and my experiments, capturing dozens of shots for analysis, I made a table representing some data about the relation between the cold water or room temperature water and uh, the boiler capacity and also the ther thermal mass. Let's have a look at this slide for a minute. Overall thermal mass is uh, the sum of the weight of the boiler, the group head and the water content. I excluded the dispersion plate because it could be three different metals, it could be aluminium, uh, brass or stainless steel and that has a more impact on the output water than the actual thermal mass of the boiler itself and water contained inside the boiler. I also excluded the solenoid valve, the water inlet uh, part or uh, the OPV on all the machines and also the steam valve because those are sticking out parts so those also has less relevance here. In feed water temperature is at room temperature about 20 Celsius or 68 Fahrenheit. Let's have a look at a few kind of beverages uh, what we normally make on a Gadget Classic like single ristretto, single, uh, single espresso, double espresso and double lungo. Water withdrawn is the sum of the output liquid and water left in the puck and this is the percentage of the water withdrawn uh, in regards of the overall thermal mass. As you can see it's uh, about 1% with a single ristretto but it climbs up to 4.5 with a double lungo. This means the percentage above will be fed in the boiler in about 25 to 40 seconds while increased heating will be applied by the PID with a minimal delay. This usually results in a temperature drop of 4 Celsius measured at the boiler during a double espresso, so 4 Celsius or 7 Fahrenheit. This is superior to the original bimetallic thermos that controls stock version, yet it is far away from commercial machines. There is another way to overcome this issue called intrashot temp surfing, but that isn't a convenient and super consistent solution. Meanwhile, it requires a lot of practicing. Why should you consider upgrading to preheat coils? What it does, wraps around the boiler, utilizing the heat loss while also drawing some extra heat of it to be truthful, but that's uh, negligible in my experience. This has two major impacts to the thermodynamics of the machine. First, we increased the thermal mass by one third of the entire system, or doubled the thermal mass of the boiler itself as a passive extension. And it also keeps the first 75 milliliter, uh, or two and a half ounces, waiting to be fed in the boiler preheated to 75 Celsius or 167 Fahrenheit. 75 milliliter or 75 grams is uh, above 90% of the boiler capacity and also equals to the maximum water to be withdrawn during a shot. As you can see we already decreased the percentage of the thermal mass what we are withdrawing from the machine so that already has an impact. These numbers are based on my experiments. Unfortunately, the real-life calculation is way above my skills and would probably bore most people to death. But it is easy to see. The less the PID have to fight with, the less it will miss. In real life, the usual 4 Celsius or 7 Fahrenheit temperature drop measured at the boiler during a double espresso is reduced to 1 Celsius or 2 Fahrenheit if the machine is warmed up properly. And this is done consistently. 
On version 1 classics it has the input after the OPV so only the water used in brewing will be preheated not to waste energy or lower the efficiency by heating the overpressure flow returning to the reservoir. As the coil is wrapped around the boiler tightly the warm up time is close to the stock version. As a conclusion for the single risk retro drinkers I wouldn't recommend it too much Worth to mention, I did notice difference in taste even with good intra-shot temp surfing routine on my beloved 9 grams in, 12.5 grams out single ristrettos when achieving plus minus uh, half Celsius temperature stability measured at the boiler during a, during a shot. On doubles, however, it has a more significant impact. What are the system requirements? The classic must be PIG controlled. Uh, and I mean both brew and steam uh, temperatures because the steam firmaval need to be partially removed uh, so there will be no room to fit the steam thermostat. The small solenoid coils, so 30 mm in height, 22 mm depth and uh, 28 mm width rather than the bigger one or a pressure gauge tapped in between the solenoid and the group head from Brewbetter or myself or uh, from Shades of Coffee. This is necessary to position the solenoid coils further away from the boiler. I can also provide with a spacer to overcome this requirement without fitting such a pressure gauge or the small solenoid coils. Installation will avoid the warranty due to the boiler fabrication. And the final requirement is the ability to fabricate or the willingness to order the preheat coils with a new boiler. What sort of fabrication is required for the installation? The tightly coiled copper tubing fits the boiler snugly so the stick out of the perimeter should be eliminated at four points on the classic boiler. The first one, the most obvious, is the steam thermostat thermoval at 12 o'clock from top U. These need to be uh, partially removed. Partial cutting of the tab where the metal plate securing the thermal fuse is bolted. So that should be partially cut while leaving the threading functional. Complete cutoff of the tab opposite. So at three o'clock. However, on all the boilers, you probably don't have that, but you do on newer ones. Smoothening the casting tool seam at 6 o'clock and 12 o'clock. However, this is done on newer boilers from factory, but on some older ones, it's not bad on this older one, but uh, sometimes you will have a quite rough seam edge there, which need to be filed off. This could be done with any of the following tools, hand metal saw, uh, hand file, however to get rid of that lump with a hand file would take quite a lot of elbow grease, drama tool, most handheld sanding tools or an angle grinder. It is necessary to remove the boiler alongside with the group head for the installation. It is also a great opportunity for a major service. Downsides of having preheat coils, fabrication requirements of the boiler, the coils emitting clinging noise when the pump is ran in an open system. No coffee grounds or blind basket uh, blocking the way of water so no pressure could build up. Increased warm up time by 5-10 minutes based on my experiments due to the, the increase in thermal mass. And also increased energy consumption due to the same reason as thermal mass, overall thermal mass is uh, increased by 600, over 600 grams or almost 1.5 pounds. This is guesstimated to be 5 to 10% uh, increased energy consumption. The extra step of removing the coils in order to remove the boiler from the group head. This however could be done uh, in an ideal world with non-sized bolts with a modified 5mm Allen key where the stick out is only 15mm if the group is out of the machine. Otherwise you won't have access to undo the boiler bolts securing the boiler to the group head and the uh, last downside is it is consistent this is normally an up but uh, there is no option to brew with the declining temperature profile you are used to so no option to, for temperature uh, profiling neither upsides though on top of uh, the ones mentioned already it is maintenance free so fit it once never touch again unless you are replacing the boiler uh, due to any reasons or opening it up for a major service. It could be moved to a new boiler or to a new machine uh, however it will require the fabrication again on a new boiler but with this 
you can get closer to a commercial machine and most likely you are beating a single boiler competition below half a liter boiler capacity. How to order? Due to the number of orders I keep receiving, at this moment I don't have a website, but you can get in touch via my Facebook page to order. There is a link in the description and you can also find my email address there. If you found this video interesting, good or bad, please let me and YouTube know by hitting the like or dislike or comment below. For more videos on this and other classic related topics you are welcome to subscribe. Hint, I'm in the process of making an in-depth experiment about the thermodynamics of the classic with numerous high precision fast response temperature sensors and a scale slide device on stock PID and preheat coiled machines. Stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching. Bye.